seriously? I really don't know. I, I don't know how to do this because it's not fair. I don't want to be like that. It's just not going to happen. I want to wear neutrals because I want to wear neutrals. No. I want to wear... I just don't want... <laughs> Uh, no. I'm going to be the old woman that lives down the street wearing her, you know, white robes and is, is all colorful and is talking to herself. <laughs> I'm going to be the weird cat lady. <laughs> don't know. Don't make me do that tutorial that is like all the other ones. I can't. It's not going to happen. Hi my beautiful friends and welcome back to my channel for part two of my anti-aging special. <laughs> Today we're going to actually go into a few tips and tricks for um, application and styles in anti-aging but it will not be your, you know, those anti-aging color recommendations that you usually get because there's just too much of that out there and I'm not going to do even like one more video on that <laughs> so it's gonna be different and I hope you enjoy it so stay right here we're going to rock this together and once we're done I promise you we will not look like just one more neutral colored faced woman because this is not how we want to age <laughs> at least not if you're with me on my channel <laughs> so stay tuned it's coming right up hi friends i actually have been a bit in a dilemma trying to prepare for this video because i've been torn about what to do because i know what is sort of being expected of me to do that I will recommend you all these things that everybody recommends <laughs> like for example to go for more matte uh, colors to stay in a certain shade range and this and that and the other thing and I really don't feel like I want to do this because I would not be true to myself it wouldn't be me and if you want that you can watch I don't know, hundreds of other videos that will give you exactly that. So what I will do though is I will give you my view on uh, certain things that I think are universally true. But when it comes to my, cho uh, my choice of colors, I will not do what is expected because I don't think that we, any of us, have to be like that and that nobody can tell us that from age 35 or 40 on upwards we are limited to neutral colors and to not make a splash i don't believe in that and it's not going to happen if i want to wear neutral colors then it's because on that certain day i want to wear neutral colors because today i feel like it but nobody's going to tell me because I'm almost 40 that this is it and I can throw all my colors out or I'm just too you know it's not going to happen so that being said let's start so today for the very first time you see me completely natural with nothing on I literally literally <laughs> just fell out of bed half an hour ago it's very early in the morning um so this is how my face looks this is how shiny my face is. I have no problem with dull skin yet. <laughs> and I washed my face and that's all I did. Um, so let's start. I am going to start with my uh, moisturizing day cream, which is the powerful anti-wrinkle cream SPF 20 from Health and Beauty. I'm gonna show you this. I'm, I'm going to also, of course, mention everything in the um, description box down below i love all of the products of health and beauty they are so good and they are so reasonably priced reasonably priced um at least when you buy them here locally i know i've seen them in um online and they cost 
something like four times what they cost here when you buy them locally because you know there's a big hype about um, the Dead Sea minerals and everything so of course they're trying to make some money there but um, you might just have to come and visit and then you know load up your suitcase <laughs> with health and beauty products because they're really really good I've been using them for years and actually nothing else no other company so I'm really really convinced So as you can see, I'm just really like massaging it into my face and into my skin. <laughs> and then usually what I would do, I would now get up and fold a basket of laundry because I would want to let it sit for a few minutes. So I'm not gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do now, after a few minutes now have passed, um, I'm going to put on my skin guard, which is this one. I have showed that in my last video already. It's the Skin Guard Invisible from Careline SPF 50. So put that on and massage it in as well. Now, my friends, we're moving on to the primer. I'm using the Sakara primer. You can use whatever you're always using. You see that I'm doing all these layers, it's very important. It's also very important to let it sink in and not just put it on and on and on. Let it sink in and dry down a little bit. And uh, so you have to sort of build it into your morning routine so you don't have all this empty time wasted and sitting down waiting for um, everything to dry down. Basically just build it in so you have something else to do in the meantime, setting the table or for breakfast or who knows what. <laughs> so this is the primer. And then we are basically ready to move on to the foundation, which in today's case, because it's the um, anti-aging special, I will not use. Because as your skin ages and all those wrinkles are forming and everything, you should, you have a few options. You can either use a very, very lightweight formula for foundation, or if you don't have that and you don't want to go and spend extra money now, um, you can also use a heavier um, foundation, but mix it with your moisturizing cream. Just take a little bit out of both and then mix it on your on the back of your hand and then take a sponge or whatever you want to apply it with and put it on. You can also, and that's what I'm going today, uh, going to do today, uh, use a BB cream or a CC cream and just be done with that. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm using the Miluka CC cream in shade light. Shade 01. Um, because it's very good. They moisturize, they are not very heavy weight, and, um, and they do cover up some blemishes. The thing is, you don't want to cover up like your whole, basically, you don't want to cover up everything because the whole point of you being youthful or looking youthful is that there will there should be some sign of life still visible you know if you'd go for a full coverage foundation you're basically taking everything out everything uh, natural out of your face and that will then not make you look youthful it might make you look full um, it might make you look flawless at least in the areas that are not wrinkled yet but um, I don't think in general it's a very wise decision to go for a very heavy formula foundation. Um, apply it in a thin layer, use sheer coverage, and um, look for products with peptides and other anti-aging agents so you can get an extra uh, benefit from it that it 
you know will also be just good for your skin and what i also want to recommend is go for a yellowish undertone and that applies to all skin colors um, because it just warms up your your face your um, complexion in general and that will always make you look younger moving on to the face powder skip it <laughs> don't do it <laughs> yeah um it is actually recommended to not set your face because that will instantly make you look older it will just you know get stuck in the wrinkles and it will just amplify them so if you can try to avoid it use a setting spray or use a translucent powder if you have to and maybe just use it in the t-zone and not all over your face not bake it on cake it on um you know because you want to be you want to be a little bit more youthful and fresh and glowy <laughs> so we are not going to put on powder which is very unusual for me because i do usually do that um yeah but today we don't or maybe a little bit okay so i'm going to use a little bit of the miluka i got the powder translucent powder unfortunately i don't have that as a loose powder so we'll see how this does and i'm just gently dusting it very very lightly over the skin and that's it no big deal moving on to the color correcting for the under eye area we of course want to lift that up a little bit so we use the color correcting liquid concealer from essence so also when it comes to concealers you want to stay away from very thick dense formulas you want to um, use you know go for something that is more like a liquidy consistency so we instantly don't look so tired anymore <laughs> good the next thing i want to do is my eyebrows so when it comes to eyebrows you really want to fill them in nicely of course it should not look like crazy unnatural but the thing is when you get older your hair gets thinner and as we age that's that's just one of one sign of aging so um so a full brow is actually one of the signs of being youthful but you want to do it within reason okay so what i'm using is the pupa um, eyebrow pencil in the shade 001 and with very light strokes I'm just going with my natural line I'm not reshaping or anything I'm just amplifying my own what I have I would suggest that you avoid uh, shades that are too dark. Should um, should maybe go for a shade lighter than your nat natural color, so it'll actually then blend in with your remaining hair and it'll look much more natural. If you want to go for the natural look, I mean you can do basically whatever you want. It's my opinion, but um, in general no connection to the anti-aging i personally don't like these very stark eyebrows like this it, eh, it doesn't do it for me i like to do my eyebrows because it sort of frames the um the whole eye area and it looks so nice when you have nice eyebrows and then put on a nice eyeshadow but um, i do not like a very harsh it's just not not for me okay now i'm going to use the for the brow mascara from miluka and just set the hair in place as 
not used this before it's shade one it is maybe even a tiny little bit too light for me but it's okay done don't try to reshape it with powder it's, it's gonna just look very unbelievable and tweeze only if you absolutely have to or let a professional do it um because I think we are all victims of that generation that tweezed the eye eyebrows like crazy. Um, because I used to have much thicker eyebrows and I tweezed them to a very thin line in the 90s. <laughs> so now they grew back somewhat, thank God. But, um, you know, some, some will just not come back. So good. Done with that. So we're moving on to the eyes which is of course that topic that sort of got me into trouble with my conscience <laughs> um so what you every what you hear everywhere is go for the neutral colors go for more golden tones and browns and one second i have an itch <laughs> um and I don't believe in all this. You can do whatever you want. If you feel on that day you want to go for the golden brown, then go for the golden brown and be happy. If you feel you want to have turquoise and dark blue, go for the turquoise and dark blue and just live with it. Like, be that woman who does that kind of stuff and, and who has that kind of a courage and who rocks it if you want to. If you don't, you don't. <laughs> So what we're going to do today is a orange and red makeup look <clears throat> and um, I'm going to start with this palette from Essence, the eye and face palette. <clears throat> I'm going to start with this light orange shade. It has a little bit of a shimmer to it, which is again something that I strongly believe is possible. <laughs> like, um, don't go, like even if you want to go the traditional way and use the colors that I just mentioned, um, don't think you have to go for all matte colors because actually if you go for only matte colors, it will make you look older and dull. So don't do that. You can go for like colors that have a, like a sheen to them. And um, of course, officially everybody says don't use glitter, don't use this and that and the other thing. Um, like I said, if you want to use glitter, use glitter. It's not recommended. Um, but if you think you want to, then just do it. So this has a nice sheen to it and in general one says um, if you have colors with a sheen to it um, that are like in peach, rose and gold colors then you can do that even in like on mature faces. But like I said that's the general thing but whatever you want to do basically I think. So I'm going to darken that up a little bit with another um, Essence palette that is the All About the Magical Forest palette and I'm going to use this orange color. And just darken up the crease a little bit. Now I'm going uh, back into, on, on my eyelid, I'm going to use the um, I Love Color Intensifying Eyeshadow Base from Essence. And just put that right here. Because I want to put some lighter eyeshadow there. Like if you want to make your eye look larger, bigger, 
because you know stuff start to um, things start to droop a little bit and you want to lift them and that's basically the reason for this video so um, try to keep lighter colors on your on your eyelid because that of course will make the eye itself look bigger and you just you should know that the darker you have the color the darker the colors are on your eyelid <laughs> wow english <laughs> um the more it will sort of make your eye appear smaller so just saying so I'm going back into that first essence palette, the um, I am um, eye and face palette, and I'm going to use this this shade. That is a very very light pearly kind of shade, and I'll apply that here. And now to finish it up, I am going in with the jade. Um, flash palette, <laughs> flash color palette, and I will use this red tone and we'll apply it into the edges, give it a little bit of a color pop, intensifying the orange that we put on before. The red is actually the only matte color that I'm using today. It just happens to be that way. It's not, like it doesn't mean anything, I'm just saying. In general, I always think that if you mix matte and shimmery shades in one eye look, it always looks more interesting. But I guess it's um, all a matter of personal taste. Now for the blending, you want to have upward sweeping motions in order to always keep everything moving up and not down because your face shape or your skin or whatever is, is naturally all moving down, right? So keep it up. 